Welcome back to On The Level Leadership. Good to have you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tammy and I'm a leadership development coach and consultant who's here to help you be the best leader you can be so you can grow in your career. The subject this week is on AI. It is something that everyone, it seems like these days, is talking about. A lot of my leadership colleagues that are in this space on YouTube and elsewhere are talking about artificial intelligence and its impact on leadership. You're letting her keep it. Would you like to know the probability of her using it against you? It's high. Let's get going. It's very high. Now, we've been using robotics in organizations to automate processes for decades. If you look at the automotive industry, for example, is a perfect example of this. And although it did eliminate some jobs, there's always a need for a human at the end of the day to either perform some sort of quality assurance or to make decisions around the business itself. And as my colleague, Ben Kosh, who's from Jetway Leadership on YouTube, has stated, just because the calculator was invented doesn't mean that you don't need humans to interpret the data or to actually perform the functions. So there is an element of concern around jobs disappearing because of AI. That's normal. Anytime new technology is introduced to the market, there's these concerns. But here's the truth. As leaders, AI can have some tremendous benefits around decision making. Artificial intelligence can help us identify trends. It can help us identify problems before they actually become highly problematic in organizations. And it can optimize our processes so that we can achieve more efficiencies and ultimately improve the bottom line of an organization. AI can provide us a number of detailed information pieces around customer insights, desires. I mean, if you look at Google Analytics now, you can see at any given time how many people are searching for a certain item or a keyword, whether they be short or long tail keywords. In fact, that helps me develop these videos, for example. And Artificial intelligence can help to analyze how we're doing things and where we might be able to start looking at doing things a bit better. Ultimately, it's going to make decision making for leaders easier over time. But there are a few challenges that as leaders, it is really important as humans at the end of the analysis road that we keep in mind. There are a few problems that I really want to key in here because I think it's super important that we keep this in mind. As with any statistical analysis, there is always the concept of bias. Anyone who's in research knows that bias can really present a problem. You can actually shift data in such a way where you can actually, for lack of better words, inadvertently or advertently create bias to show and demonstrate a story that you want to see in your favor. Well, here's the thing. With artificial intelligence, it's just pulling from the data that's online. And if the data that's online is already biased in some way, the result or the output of that AI input is going to be biased. I have an example of this. So, for example, if you're looking at uh, getting the top five ways to improve your cardiovascular health, and you're a woman looking at this through an AI lens, the reality is that the current data that exists right now publicly is biased towards programs and or research studies that were primarily done with male participants. So if you're female or you have female anatomy, here's the reality is that the information that the AI will spit out around how to improve your cardiovascular, how to recognize that you have cardiovascular illness may differ in women than it would in men, but you wouldn't know that because the bias that's already implicitly or explicitly in the data online right now is male dominated. So as a woman, I would be very cautious about doing an AI search, provide the top five signs that I have cardiovascular disease and putting it into the system and then taking those results as fact for me. So it's really important that as a leader, when we look at leadership trends, when we look at people management trends, that we keep an open eye and an open mind to the concept that the data that we're getting from the AI might be highly biased and we need to be able to make that distinction. That's the value of leadership is being able to look at what you're seeing and doing an analysis in the context of your organization, in the context of your life and seeing if that makes sense from a bias perspective. The algorithm also might not give you the information that is diversity based. So if there's not enough diversity based data in the public online world, then again, your AI will spit out things that is not necessarily in alignment with diversity or equity initiatives. So again, it comes down to analysis as a human being to see what parts of this can you pull, what parts of it can you leave. 
It also speaks to the notion that we need to actually ensure that this bias doesn't happen by looking at ways of improving the data sets for those groups and or people that have not been served by either research studies or data investigations. Right. So if you're a woman or you're of a minority group or you're from a First Nations organization, these kinds of things may not have been well served previously. And so we need to look at ways of bumping up the data so that when the AI is used, it actually provides a less biased approach to its analysis. As a leader, it's also really important that decisions themselves in and of themselves should not at this point, the AI is not sophisticated enough to make decisions on behalf of a human being. I come from the world of emergency management and I would be hard pressed to let an AI tell me how we should be responding to a disaster or an emergency because the AI will only look at numbers, but won't necessarily look at the intangible human impacts of that particular response. So it's really important that contextually what we make decisions on has a human element attached to it. Remember that I've said it on this channel a thousand times. I'm going to say it again. Leadership is relational. It's not data driven. It's about relationship. And right now, it is really hard to have a relationship with an AI. Good evening, Safia. It's great to see you again, Hal. I haven't seen you in a while. I've been around. Yes, they can speak like a human. Yes, you can have a video of somebody talking over script. But at the end of the day, there's no back and forth. At the end of the day, it's not sophisticated enough to really give us a sense that there's some kind of interaction or some kind of soul at the base of it. So as leaders, you're not replaceable by AI. I'm sorry, not yet. Anyway, maybe 20, 30, 50 years from now, we'll all be replaced by AI. I don't know. But right now, you are still very much needed. And you cannot sit on your ass and say, you know what, I'm just going to let the AI give the response. That is not what leadership is about. For us, our job is going to be to step up, assess the data, see what the outputs are from AI, use it to our benefit to help us make decisions, but not actually be the decision maker. Because if we become too reliant on AI and we don't take the time to analyze and think critically about the data that we're presenting with, that's going to create a sense of complacency. And it is extremely dangerous, not just to organizational culture, but to the impacts to the public at large, potentially. Artificial intelligence is a super powerful tool. I'm using it. And frankly, I love it. I can see the value of it. However, I also see the danger of it. As humans, we are, you know, by definition, I would call us energy conservationists. We like to do as little as we need to, to be successful in life. That's at least that's where we're at now in our culture. But I have to say that as much as that may be the case where we're looking for efficient ways to do things, we cannot let go of the wheel just yet on how we lead organizations, how we make decisions, how we engage people, how we get people on board with a vision, how we communicate, how we problem solve, how we think critically. All those things are still very much a human element. And until AI catches up to that, if it ever does, you are still very much needed. So keep building those skills. Keep following your favorite leaders here on YouTube. There are a number of them. I've got a couple channels down below I'm going to link you to. I've got Mike Ashy out of Toronto, which I really enjoy working alongside him. I've got Ben Kosh. I've got Leadership Jetway. There's a number of colleagues that I work with or that I have communications with on a regular basis that are great leader and leadership development uh, folks on their own. So I'm going to encourage you to check out their videos and their channels down below. At the end of the day, we're all here to help you be the best leader you can be. So if that is of interest to you, make sure you subscribe because we are all here to help you out. I'm here usually weekly, not always, but most of the time I'm here weekly to help you out. And if you have any content you want us to tackle, like in the comments down below, folks, if there's a certain leadership challenge, I would even say a management challenge, although there are slight differences between managers and leaders. And if you want to know that difference, I'd be happy to do a video on that. But if you have any kind of ideas around what you want to see, let us serve you. Let us help you. Put your ideas down below and we'll put some videos together for you. Remember, AI is here to stay. It is a useful tool. It will help us tremendously going forward in the decades to come. But don't forget that we are still human beings. We still need that connection and you are still very much needed as a leader in your organization. Take care, folks. Until next time, see ya.